Hey y'all, welcome to part two in my series of the restoration of a Wilton machinist vise. Now, I'm gonna beg your forgiveness in this video. Uh, um, I'm just going to document the disassembly and electrolysis and cleaning of the vise. Well, I got the electrolysis and cleaning okay. The disassembly part kinda took a nosedive. Um, as some of you have seen before in other Wilton vice uh, restorations, what you basically do is drive the pins that hold the spindle nut in place. You drive one pin through to uh, the other side, they make contact, and then you drive both pins out all the way through. Well, this vice, it turns out, wasn't exactly drilled 100% straight. And what ended up happening is instead of one pin meeting the other, they crossed paths. That ended up with me having to drill out those pins. No worries. Uh, I found some suitable material to make some new pins out of. I uh, don't know how much of that I'm going to show in the next video, but um, I'll be making new pins for it and uh, getting it all together. To compound matters, um, while I was in the process of disassembling it, <laughs> unbeknownst to me, the battery on my camera died. Audio was mediocre as usual, so that spurred me to finally take the plunge, bite the bullet, and I'm shooting this on a new camera. So about halfway through the video, the sound and the video quality are going to improve mysteriously. Here's hoping that settles some of the problems, technical problems I've been having in the past. So rather than fill you up with a bunch of excuses, let's go ahead and get into part two of the Wilton Vice restoration. Okay, it's time to start digging out, digging the foam out of this bore. And I'll get started with a couple of all. Now, a lot of people have suggested things like uh, acetone and gasoline and what have you to get this out of here. And I do plan on using something like that. It's just that um, the more I can get rid of, the less goop I have to deal with when I start doing that. It was at this point in the filming that I started uh, describing the 5 seconds inch drift I was using to start driving the uh, retaining pins out of the uh, tail cone of the vise. Uh, if you've watched any of the other vise restoration videos, you know you drive one pin through one side, it makes contact with the other pin, and you drive them both out. Well, uh, this vise wasn't drilled straight. So what happened was I drove one pin through one side and it didn't make contact with the pin on the other side. So I started trying to drive that pin out to make contact with the first pin and they bypassed one another, which means I had to drill the pins out. Then to complicate matters, my camera battery decided to die right about here. Well, with a fresh camera battery, I got back outside and got back to work using my impact screwdriver. I uh, went ahead and made short work of uh, loosening the screws that hold the jaws in place. Now, every time I whack that mechanism with my hammer, it turns the uh, screw just slightly. Okay, with the screws out of the jaws, it's time to go ahead and take a drift and tap the jaw off of the base. And there we go. Now the way this screw is kept in there is with these three screws here and this horseshoe washer. Now if I'm lucky, these three screws are not stuck. So far so good. Okay, and there we have it broken down into its major components. Uh, we've got, of course, the base and the dynamic jaw, or front jaw, movable jaw. The nut, the lead screw, or shaft. 
There's the horseshoe washer, the jaws and their screws, the dust cap and the engine. Yeah. I have the everything all set up here. I've got these parts dangling. And now I'm getting ready to fix to mix up the soup and put it in there. Again, we're using washing soda, not baking soda or anything else. Uh, I'm only going to be filling up to about here. So this copper will not, and this zinc will not be in the solution. So let's go ahead and get the mixture put in there and get her done. For those keeping track, I have about three cups of, so, of uh, washing soda mixed with about a gallon of water, and then I'm filling this up to the desired level. If I need to add a little bit more, I can, uh, but I probably won't have to. So, now we're just waiting for it to fill up. We've got everything set. Let's Go ahead and plug her in. And the reaction was almost immediate. Looking, You can look down there. I've got the charger set at 10 amps and you can see bubbles coming off that horseshoe washer and that nut. And there's more bubbles over here coming up off of the spindle. So we've got a good mixture going here, a good brew. Not quite as many bubbles on the tail cone over here, but it's kind of out from in between. Of course, you can't see anything because of the glare anyway. So, we're going to leave this in there for a few hours, and we will come back probably in the morning and check this out, see how we're doing. Okay, so here are the dust cap and the spindle, fresh out of the soup. Now, um, these were pretty heavily corroded, so I went ahead and I left them in the bath for 48 hours. And I'm just going to take a wire brush and uh, clean them up a little bit with the wire brush, and then we'll get on to further prep for painting after that. So, and it doesn't take much. Uh, about all I do is take them straight out of the the uh, electrolysis bath and then go straight into a bucket of uh, fresh water to kind of rinse it and I'll be going back and forth rinsing it here and there as I go getting the inside of this cap is going to be a bit of a bear but that's okay we'll get her figured out and rinse it a couple times Then, of course, I'll blow it off with compressed air. While I'm working on this, I'm going to go ahead and put this back in the rinse water to keep going. There. And this is getting, I mean, it got all kinds of stuff off of here. It's turned any remaining rust into magnetite. And now I'm just cleaning off the loose stuff then for this I'll probably go back over it with 80 then 150 just to smooth everything out before I prime and paint but yeah and I got a little toothbrush for getting into the nooks and crannies and crevices that the big wire brush won't get into and I'd say that's done. That looks 
actually pretty good. Now one thing about electrolysis, this here is still a little bit more of that foam that it was packed in. It's no big deal. Uh, it's not going to hurt anything with that being in there. Now, the thing about this electrolysis, as I began to say, you don't get bright, shiny, clean, brand new looking parts out of it. It is a little bit dark, but that's okay. Um, it's no big deal. It's all going to be painted no matter what. It's just stopping the corrosion is the more important part. Now here's the spindle. Uh, and I'll go ahead and get it cleaned up. And this will get, uh, of course, it'll get uh, greased and spend most of its life in that grease. So, I'm not overly concerned about it rusting again, with the exception of the hub out here and the handle. And I'm a little bit unsure on how I want to finish it, them rather. Um, now, Keith Rucker, in his vice refurbish, he went ahead and polished them all up and then gave them a clear coat. Well, I don't think I'm going to go that far because it's a working vice, it's a tool, it's going to get beat up, it's going to be, you know, it's going to live a, uh, not, not a super rough and tumble life, but enough to matter. So, I even looked into, you know, I got to admit though, the bright shiny would look really cool on this. Uh, against the color that I've chosen to uh, paint the, the vice body. So I even looked into chrome plating it. But our local chrome shops have closed down for good. And finding one that doesn't want one arm, two legs, and half a thigh um, in Oregon is ding-dong near impossible. Just about all of the so-called chrome shops here anymore farm out their work and, uh, you know, send it down to Southern California and uh, have them chrome down there. And that comes with all of those associated problems, as you can imagine. Now, are you going to get back your parts? Are they going to be the right parts? What is shipping? Etc. Etc. So, shove that back over here so it'll quit flipping up on me. So, I've kind of scrapped the idea of chroming it. But you gotta admit it would look cool as heck. So I'm unsure. Um, I may paint it. I may not. I may just clean it up as good as I can, oil it, and call it good. If you got an opinion, I'd like to hear it. That would be cool. I've looked into chrome plating. I've looked at chromate conversions. I've thought of powder coating. But. I don't know. Um, again, it's going to be a working tool. So, I think going all out on something like that would be more for ego than anything else. So, get this rinsed off here. You can see what I'm doing. I'm not scrubbing on this super, super hard. I'm just getting the loose stuff. But it does come right off. That's looking pretty ding-dong good. And 
again I know I've said it several times but it is that's it's what's important to me it's killed off any corrosion so it's not going to keep rusting any corrosion that comes along is going to be new stuff which I have to try to protect against so I'll finish cleaning this up and then we will be ready for paint And before I do anything, this will be blown dry with the uh, air nozzle. side. And I think that's good enough to call done and ready for finishing. So there we go. Spindle, dust cap, and those are the last parts to come out of the electrolysis tank. So I'm going to go ahead and call this the end of part two. In the final installment, what we'll do is get some primer on it, get it painted, reassemble it, and put this puppy back to work. So I know this isn't a 100% step-by-step how-to. This is just documenting how I'm restoring this old Wilton vice. So if you got anything at all out of this video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up down there. It really does help. If you'd like to keep track of this channel, keep track of this restoration, go ahead and hit that subscribe button while you're down there. Whether you do that or not though, thank you very, very much for watching and y'all take care.